Okay, however, that's not the point for this evening. What I was going to try was to take you through some of the hardware that I've bought or conglomerated over the past three or four years, uh, which helped me uh, produce worlds, produce spaces, and generally have a lot of fun in VR and mixed reality uh, and a few other bits and pieces. So if you'd like to join me, it's in Mark J's Techscape. Uh, you probably want to teleport into this, or if you're on a browser, just click your way through. I don't think I've got in. Travel. Okay, we've got Donny is through. Uh, Donny, you might want to try and step forward onto that intro there. Do we have some people trying having some issues getting into this world? Nope, we have another one through. And we have somebody stuck in limbo. So I suggest you unmute yourself so that we can uh, talk to each other. Okay, if you finish listening to the intro, you can come and join me on the fitness island. As Donny's made it, Cleve made it, but I don't think Kurt has. He seems to be a bit stuck. I should have mentioned beforehand, uh, but it's better off using Firefox rather than uh, Edge or Chrome, um, but I think I'll have to leave that as a learning experience. Okay, so um, this is my tech world, and I have various bits of hardware scattered over it. Uh, this was just an experimental island, just to see how it works. Uh, what you can do is go onto one of any of these audio patches, and it plays the audio for anybody on the island. Fitness isn't really integrated with the other functions, but I did this island while designing the style of the space. The podium has the model of a physical kit, a Fitbit Charge 2, which are made with some photogrammetry. Please be tolerant, small models are tricky, which is why it's not a great recreation. The posters give some details on the hardware, and there's a kickboard with details of the version I used previously. The linkage bridge mentions that the wristband sends data to an app on the tablet. Uh, I'm just communicating uh, with a few folks here. Um, so could you perhaps wander back and uh, try the tablet audio whilst I just uh, help a few other people get into this. This active grid method to redirect light so it can render stereo without the user wearing any 3D glasses. Leia has also created a whole ecosystem of apps that support stereo and 3D models. This means I can view any model in the Sketchfab in 3D. I can take stereo photographs and use the apps to display them or 3D video. For my purposes, the LoomPad is the second best tablet in the world. The best one is the LoomPad 2. I hope its price drops this year.
Hi, Armin. Glad you could make it. Uh, I think people have started wandering over to uh, the stereo page by now. Uh, you probably just teleported over to VR there. Somebody did. Buckley. Come on, Brown. It's the most widely used VR headset. Whoa. I'm moving around in a strange place. Whoa. How did we get over here? Um, I'm going to try and direct you a different route. So, could we come over to a uh, tablet again? And then over to stereo photos, which is uh, this way. Hi, okay. Who's in a, a headset? VR headset. Yes, Donny. Donny, take a look at the parrot there. What you should that see is, sweet. is a neat stereo picture. If you're in a browser, you won't see that. Uh, but if you are in a headset, it is a quite beautiful um, piece of uh, stereo. Hold on. Looking a on a 2D screen or a browser, and these will appear as normal photos. But if you're wearing a VR headset, then you will be being given a slightly different viewpoint in each eye. And your brain will fuse the two images together and presume it's still one image, but with depth. This is the wonder of stereoscopy. It provides enough information to convince us that there's a 3D scene ahead, but with only two photographs. Two formats shown here, the classic rectangular stereo photos and the newer VR180 format that I display in inverted hemispheres. Yeah, try the VR1. Uh, you have to get quite close to V for it to work neatly. Be careful if you step on anything that looks like you've got a teleport symbol on it, you would appear somewhere completely different. Okay, let's take a look at some of the cameras you need for this. Uh, so please ask questions as, as we go. Now I've gathered a reasonable group together. Uh, this is the digital camera, but full of egg vifts. Um, there were a couple of other digital cameras. Uh, the choices are either very old or very, very expensive. This is the only consumer Stereo one. Cameras have been made like practically from the start of photography. But they, of course, used film. Digital stereo cameras are remarkably rare, partly due to the difficulty in synchronising two shots with perfectly matched, aligned and similarly focused lenses. The most recent digital consumer camera is this KuCam Ego, generally considered by the stereoscopic community to be a good attempt but please do better next time. But the market for a straightforward digital stereo camera doesn't seem to exist, and manufacturers seem slightly more interested in the fisheye lens VR 180 format. Yeah, so the stereoscopic community are very, very picky. Uh, they are expert in what they do, uh, and they think everything should be as expert as they are, for they were very somewhat unimpressed by this camera. But think of it's the only digital one out there at a consumer level. Uh, I'd still go for it if you were interested in stereo. It costs like thousands of pounds to get something better uh, than uh, what we can get here, which, which is a couple of hundred dollars or so. Uh, by the way, everything that I've got here cost $500 or less. I'm not showing you any terribly expensive equipment. Let's go over to um, the other type of stereo camera, the Looking one that produces on a the VR180 stuff. Or a browser and the okay, so uh, this uh, little camera here 
very ingenious idea. Uh, Donny, could you just step onto the audio spot and, and start playing it? After Google introduced the VR180 format, a few companies played with the idea of configurable cameras. Using two or three fisheye lenses, these could take VR180 stereoscopic photos or videos, and then have the body of the camera twist or hinge to take monoscopic 360 degree photos or videos as well. The best of these was the Insta360 Evo. On the market for only about a year, it's my one purchase that is now worth more second hand than I paid for it. So I'm strangely tempted at the moment because it took me, I think it was $350 to buy. And occasionally you see them on eBay for $1,200 or so. So I'm thinking, well, I don't use it that much. So I'm still tempted to uh, uh, sell the one I've got. But I've probably not kept it in pristine condition, which is what you tend to need to do. There were a couple of other configurable cameras produced. Uh, these ones down here. Um, they've, this one, you fully pressed a button and it flipped from two eyes to one eye. Uh, this one, uh, the Kando Kukam, you twisted. And there are rumours of a Canon uh, configurable camera that was going to come out or is going to come out, but they haven't given a price for it. One just presumes that Canon will be extremely expensive. Okay, so what do I do with this? I tend to use it for a 360 camera quite a lot and produce things like this photosphere. Mm. A few more people come through. A problem. Oh, welcome to Colchester. Degree Don't walk off. You'll fall into the sea. How to display them. Facebook and other apps will show a portion and let you scroll around. VR is a better solution, showing as much as a headset can manage and giving you easy freedom to look in different directions. In social platforms built with Unity, we have a choice of making the 360 photo the sky box at a far distance. A problem with ah, 360 don't walk degree over the audio or second time. spherical photos is how to display more. them. Facebook and other apps will show a portion and let you scroll around. VR is a better... A problem with 360 degree uh, or spherical top. photos is how to display them. Facebook and other apps will show a portion and let you scroll around. VR is a better solution, showing as much as a headset can manage and giving you easy freedom to look in different directions. In social platforms built with Unity, we have a choice of making the 360 photo the sky box at a far distance, or as the inside of a sphere, uh, such as this view of Colchester's Castle Park. Okay, if you care, come out carefully, come out to the gimbal uh, page here. Oh, I think people are slowly coming across the gimbal. Hi. So, again, Vove in a headset. The resolution uh, should be able to see this video going here. Cameras were laughable 2K pixels on the circumference. Remember, you only see about a quarter of that in VR. Later cameras have pushed up to 4 or 6K, but that is barely adequate. Uh, but better resolution needs very expensive cameras. Hugh Hu had a YouTube video which explained that this low-cost Insta360 Flow gimbal would follow an auto pattern shooting 18 high-quality iPhone pictures that could be stitched together and create a 10K photo. That needs some additional software, but I'm happily using the base level uh, 6K version at present. 
Okay, so I love this gimbal. It's fantastic. You can hold it in your hand. You have, you have a normal gimbal for a, uh, a, a camera, for, for a phone. But the video, if you can see it behind where I'm pointing at the moment, uh, has this gorgeous feature where you say, just take pictures automatically, and it spins round and takes 18 photographs and stitch them together into the full spherical photo uh, that we were earlier in. Hi, by the way, nobody seems to be asking me any questions, so please do unmute yourself and start talking if you fancy. I don't see a video. Ah, right. Yeah, yeah are playing. you in a browser? This is going to be a problem yeah. generally in that uh, Spatial have some things uh, working in headsets and other things working in browsers. So they haven't been consistent. So you need to be in a headset to see the video. You need to be in a browser to uh, click on the View More Details button uh, down here. If you're in a headset, absolutely nothing happens at all on that. But if you're in a browser, you get a web page uh, telling you for more details about the, uh, the, the kit. Yep, sorry about that. Okay, so let's get into the confusion of telephones. Right, so do you all get your telephone as a telephone? I got mine as a camera. I'm not a habitual iPhone buyer, but bought a second-hand iPhone 12 Pro due to its inbuilt LiDAR. That allows me to make accurate photogrammetry very quickly. Extra reasons to use it quickly arrived. The Zapbox development team pivoted to making the iPhone's ultra-wide camera their target device. Also, I saw a video on the Insta360 Flow with its ability to create 360 spheres by taking multiple iPhone photographs. Okay, so I said I'm using the iPhone principally as a camera rather than a phone. And this is one of the other reasons why I'm using it as a camera. The Zapbox 3. What a wonderful piece of plastic this is. Remember Google Cardboard? Pop your mobile into a cardboard box and you have a simple... VR viewer? Zapbox 3 is a low-cost evolution of that idea, but now in plastic, with a fully functional set of controllers, and using an iPhone 11 or better ultra-wide camera. Remember Google Cardboard? Oh, sorry. Pop Started your mobile again. into a cardboard box and you have a simple VR viewer? Zapbox 3 is a low-cost evolution of that idea, but now in plastic, with a fully functional set of controllers, and using an iPhone 11 or better ultra-wide camera to give you mixed reality. When using it, the lens position and the see-through plastic arms give a wonderful illusion of the phone disappearing, just leaving a simple mixed reality viewpoint. It is an astonishingly cheap $80.00 and we use Zappos development tools and a Unity SDK to allow a low entry point for developers wanting to try out MR. So this is strangely promising. If you already have an iPhone, relatively modern one, and have $80 to blow, uh, you can get this loaded device with, with these controllers, um, and you can do mixed reality uh, off it. Again, you're going to use Unity, to uh, write an APK, uh, put it onto your iPhone, which is going to be probably, probably one of the more tricky bits uh, because Apple aren't terribly keen on you for having your own economy like that. Uh, but then you've got a small but functional mixed reality system. Okay, uh, maybe let's go up the stairs to a more uh, functional one. Oh, hi. Sorry, what was for the question? Mark, those voices or not? Both voices? Can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you. Do you have one of those devices? Yes, I have just bought one of these. Oh, no, I bought one ages ago. I was uh, a Kickstarter. 
for it. Um, and I've used the single app they've got out there in the, and I've tried their FDK, but their FDK isn't very helpful at the moment. So I need to do a bit ah, more work bad. before before okay, I can get thanks. before before I can teach anyone that one. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to go round here and up the stairs. Well done, guys. I've had lots of practice in going up all stairs. Not easy thing to do first time. Okay, let's just hear about the N real or the X real air the now. X real air, previously the N real air, is a pair of lightweight MR glasses that project an image from the top of the glasses down through bird bath lenses, mixing the virtual picture with looking through to the real world. Battery and computing power is via a cable which was initially connected uh, only to an android phone this allowed it to be an early mixed reality product but it now markets itself more as a media viewer there are now adapters that allow connection to the iphone xbox ps5 the switch and both devices can cast screens to the glasses I'll give the image of a large-scale monitor or TV in your room. So these weren't initially sold in the States, but I believe they are now. Uh, so you could probably get one if you fancied. don't know, I think it's about $300 or so. Uh, remember, all the hardware you see, I definitely own. If I try this out, I produced uh, an app with um, Dave Heiser and Bruno Zaffoni. Uh, which is behind you, which a few details of that, and another 3D image which we show uh, in the Enreal Air. The Enreal Air. Okay, come over and Air. have a look at my other phone. A pair of light. Jeff, how did you like the Enreal? Um, I thought it was a lot to promise, but frankly, I, it was really annoying having a cable. It was oh, constant, okay. my cable was constantly falling out of my phone when I was trying to do any control. It was full of okay for oh. watching movies. Um, possibly if my cable had been a bit more stable, uh, I'd have enjoyed it a bit more. Uh, okay. I don't think I've got much to say about the uh, this particular phone, if nothing special. I buy my phone second hand as the level of smartphone technology has on the whole plateaued. I got the Samsung S20 FE 5G as the lowest spec Android phone that would run the Enreal Air mixed reality glasses. And I've been able to write Unity apps that can be copied to Android and run OK. The other VR use I found was using its camera as a body tracker. Using an app called Driver for VR yeah. that can be linked to VR chat and show you dancing around. So if you've, anybody here is a uh, Govan Boogie in VR chat, you can uh, point your phone at yourself, use this like, $15 piece of software, uh, and it maps your skeleton, very simply, in that white uh, skeleton shape there, and gives you full body tracking, which is a great deal cheaper than the three or $400 you need to actually put markers around your body. Hi, Lever. Glad you could join us. Come on down and let's wander over to some photogrammetry. Okay, so fun things we can do, particularly with the iPhone now, is do um, quite simple photogrammetry just by having an app and uh, using your uh, iPhone in front of things, so you can see I did a uh, battle where I did my Fitbit. Uh, this will come to this later. Uh, this is why I did a model of uh, my Oculus headset just by perching it on various things and then uh, using it with an iPhone. Hi, Tom. And this is the sort of stuff you can produce. Like that. Uh, a few more people over here. Hi, we're over in photogrammetry. 
So I think this was a, um, a, a statue which I came across on a tabletop. Uh, I was at a, a dinner and I wasn't terribly interested in the dinner. But it went out and did a bit of photogrammetry there. This took me a minute. Took me a whole minute to do this really rather nice piece of uh, stone uh, photogrammetry of uh, Salamanca. Um, where is this? Yes, yeah, Salamanca Cathedral. Look at this. It's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, but it was just by waving my iPhone over it. Got some audio. Photogrammetry. It's taking lots of photos of an object from multiple angles, then using some very clever software to create a model mesh and a texture to wrap around it. I used to take several hours capturing 50 or more photos yeah, by LIDAR. and processing via a PC program called 3DF Zephyr. But I have increasingly moved to using an iPhone, circling an object with a lens at different heights and angles where the capture of the automatically taken photos can be less than a minute. Even the subsequent processing on the iPhone or cloud-based service takes less than 10 minutes and the results are just as good. Okay, so the iPhone uses LiDAR and that's why it can get its speed and accuracy so good. The older method was just on pure photographs. Both work, but the LiDAR method is a great deal faster. If you'd like to see some examples of uh, LiDAR stuff, please come into this uh, Colchester mural world. There will be a link back. Just pop in and travel. Okay, it says other people are joining here, but I don't see you. Are you all invisible? Ah, no, somebody started to turn up. Okay, with no audio in this space, there's just me. Uh, these are all uh, artwork around Colchester subways. Um, by subway here, I just mean the underpass where you walk underneath a road. Uh, and in the 1970s, when they built them all, they were a bit worried that it would obviously become a, a, a dangerous uh, place to walk. And we thought, ooh, art would help. Uh, so they commissioned some artists, a pair of artists, to produce some artwork for the underpasses. And they said, concrete for coming thing. What you want to do is make your art out of concrete. Uh, so they built all these concrete uh, uh, history of Colchester, or uh, well, mostly old Colchester, actually. I think it's old Colchester, apart from this one for about British home stores over here. Uh, and they've stuck it up, and really, concrete art has not taken off in the same way as they were expecting. But uh, it's a perfect subject for me to try photogrammetry with is just stay there i went down the subway again just using an iphone and waving an iphone in front of each statue uh each relief sculpture for about a minute or two uh, and then five to ten minutes of processing can produce really rather nice uh quality models So, as I said, this is the sort of stuff you do with uh, a, an iPhone, and uh, obviously I've used Unity to stick it into this little uh, spatial world. Okay, we can pop back to where we were, or I think we end up on the uh, Android, on the tablet uh, space again. So I'm just going to pop back, and travel into the space. And we might as well go over to VR. Get a few more folks. Ooh. Who's that? That's Susan. Hi. 
Um, right, where are we? We are. Oh, let's take a look at the Pico. So, this is a Pico 4, which is a, uh, a lightweight uh, pancake lens headset, uh, widely available in Europe and the UK and Asia, uh, not available in the United States. And uh, that's the only reason why it isn't selling big. The Pico 4's big step forward of using pancake lenses, which allow for a lighter headset closer to the face. This makes it much more comfortable, better suited to the fitness apps. Unfortunately, they've been locked out of the United States market, so bike dancers large subsidies on a software library and trying to gain market share have largely been wasted. The Pico 4 used the same Qualcomm XR2 chip as the Quest 2, but clocked it higher, which, outside of America, gave it a one-year lead over Meta. But when the Quest 3 launches with pancake lenses and an improved chip, this advantage will be lost. Mm. Are folks expecting to buy a Quest 3 in the future? Yes. Yeah, yes, I think... Lots of the folks I know are, uh, and it's probably the right step as well. Uh, this has been good for me for about a year or so, uh, but when the Quest 3 comes out, it's going to have such a be better chip, uh, but I expect things to be a great deal more powerful inside the Quest 3. I think we just pop up. We've got a little bit on the Quest 2, but you probably all know about the Quest 2. Just come up the stairs. See, I'm using the Quest Pro, and uh, ah, I really like that, it. Who, it worked. Who's that <laughs> using the Quest Pro? I can't see you. Me. You see me? Uh, give me a name, please, because I'm I'm having some avatar yeah. problems. Danny. Oh, hi, Danny. Okay, excellent news. Uh, have you tried any mixed reality on it? Yes, uh, when it when I first got it in, since they've released some of the updates, you know, the, mm -hmm. uh, I, they have. Well, now it's getting a little bit better. You just have to customize your room and the walls. Uh, but now, like once you get that set up, it's a little bit better with the the guardian because it can see a little bit more mm -hmm. um, on its own. So it sets up the walls, and so you just place whatever you know uh, where you want it and then you can start a game like it's a, a zombie game that i use all the time and oh, it's okay. really fun because it turns your your controller into a, a flashlight and that's all you can see and when you go around it's really spooky um scary. but i love that yeah okay for for technically the quest 2 could do uh mixed reality it's got a uh, i think one mixed reality game on it that i'm aware of um but the pass-through was so bad that you wouldn't really want to. It's all black and white and blurry. Uh, but it would be useful for uh, uh, preparing mixed reality games. And then the Quest Pro is probably worth doing mixed reality on. Uh, and then when the Quest 3 comes out, it you won't have to do the full of setting up a wall, as I think you have to do at the moment of the Quest Pro. Yeah. The Quest 3 yeah. will be able to... Uh, identify where the walls are because it's got a depth sensor of its own. Yeah. Well, the Crest uh, Pro can see it and tell that it's there, but it can't set it. You still have to yeah. set it manually. And that, yeah. that's not really annoying. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, that's a problem. They, they, they cheaped out, strangely enough, on the uh, yeah, Quest Pro uh, uh, and didn't put the depth sensor on it that they had a pla initially planned to. Okay, yeah. so I think I've got one more useful thing to go go and see. So if we head over to uh, PC. Uh, let's go via this route. I mean, I haven't been Have pointing out this... every, everything on our various bridges here, but uh, there's usually something on the bridge saying why uh, two full of bits of hardware are connected. Um, PCs aren't very interesting. Let's just swap them for 
for yeah. light baking in Unity or video or any photogrammetry work, you really need a PV with a graphical processing unit, a GPU. I don't buy new PVs as they are very expensive, but luckily there's a thriving pre-loved market in old gaming PVs as the gamers move up to bigger and better chips. So I was able to get this second-hand laptop with a RTX 3070 GPU chip. Yeah, you just pop over to Unity and then we'll go and visit another world. Ah, Unity. I started collecting the full of SDKs and um, additional bits from plugins that you can get with Unity. Uh, I'm putting them on the wall here. Uh, and I have used most of these, or possibly all of them by now. I think all of them, actually. Let's just see what it says here. The owners of the Unity game engine made the bold decision to release a fully functional version free to amateur developers. This has made it the go-to development environment for virtual and mixed reality games, whilst also creating a large pool of Unity knowledgeable people who may become full-time developers in the future. Another side effect is the almost mandatory need for any XR hardware manufacturer to produce a Unity software development kit, an SDK, or a plugin for the Open XR standard, allowing easy the owners of the Unity game engine made the bold decision to release a fully functional version free to amateur developers. This has made it the go-to development environment for virtual and mixed reality games, whilst also creating a large pool of Unity knowledgeable people who may become full-time developers in the future. Another side effect is the almost mandatory need for any XR hardware manufacturer to produce a Unity software development kit, an SDK, or a plugin for the Open XR standard, allowing easy connection from Unity to their hardware. I've used Unity to produce simple apps for Quest, Pico, and Xreal Air. Luckily, Unity's lawyers only come to call if you start earning real money. Okay, so I've got to do something with these audio points to be sure they only can be started once and play through before they can be started again. Uh, I'll have to think of a, a way to do that. Uh, no, 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 it's an issue that I've got. Right, this is almost the end of our tour. Uh, if you could, uh, please uh, go down and uh, give a heart to this world, uh, just so it's easier for you to find in the future. And if you go down to the dots at the bottom, there'll be somewhere to do it there. Uh, and that uh, helps me get up the rankings uh, and I'm trending, if I'm lucky. Um, and then, as I said, one of the worlds I've built with all of these techniques, thank you, is this Colchester Sensory Garden uh, in Spatial. So if you come through to that, we can wander through it, and then you can come back here, or just disperse as you see fit. Or just ask me a few more questions, but let's travel through here. Hello? Some strange effect going on over there. Not quite sure what that is, but maybe people joining and being big. Right, so the best experience is probably walking through this bit of photogrammetry. There's photogrammetry, there's uh, 3D pictures in hemispheres, and as you walk through, the you should get a different spherical view around you as you go from one little circle to the next. See, I've changed the full of uh, image that you get as you walk through. It was an experimental technique, which I'm not too sure has completely worked, because you really need it to happen more frequently. I think I'm probably better off just sticking with photogrammetry 
I'm trying to get uh, photo, much more photogrammetry in near spaces um, and just use the spherical stuff for quite distant areas. But I thought I'd it give it a really try. Uh, the photogrammetry has worked quite well. The, as a changing of the sphere is not so much, I'm going out through this uh, direction. If there's another piece of photogrammetry, you can see uh, a, a 3D hemisphere here of a view. And if you keep walking through, you eventually get to a tree with an animated squirrel, just to let you know that you're at the end. I don't know how you get over there, Lever. I thought that was blocked off. Oh, she's gone. Okay, almost everybody through. Yeah, spatial doesn't seem to be coping with your avatars terribly well. I'm just thinking of white, um, white males. Uh, okay, so really that's about the end of the tour. Well, I've said it's now a self-guided tour. Uh, you can go and try out that audio stuff on your own if you think you missed anything or would like to uh, take another look. Uh, does anybody have any questions? You... Hardware questions. Yeah, how'd you do that building over there? Oh, that Did one... you do that with the... As, as simple-minded as you can get. It's a box with a picture of, of the front of it on it. So oh, it okay. really is okay. yeah. the oldest style of uh, photogrammetry you can wow. do. You build a, <laughs> right? build a simple model and then just flap a picture onto it. So it's still that's full good. of... <laughs> Yeah, the, the mixture of style here is just something I've tried out. I had an alt space version of this world. I had a VR chat version. And this spatial one is the most advanced so far. Uh, I'll just keep rebuilding it uh, over time if I try out different techniques, I think. Okay, well, thank you all for coming. It has been a pleasure to lead around a group. Thank well, you. Sometimes Great. I lose a few oh, of yeah, you. Thank, thank you. you very much. Uh, but... Uh, Feel free to uh, wander it again or tell people I'll put something on the Discord uh, so that uh, anyone can go and join it when they need to. Bye now. Thanks, Mark. Looks great, Mark. Okay. Hi, Mark. Oh, I'm moving it. Thanks, Mark.